What about then? Welcome to Power Lawn video. Today we're going to talk about why you shouldn't use sand to top dress your lawn. Let's go. Welcome back. So you want to top dress your lawn with, with sand. I get it. We have the sand round all the edges, now we're going to start into top dressing the lawns. But I hear everyone saying, Robbie, why are you telling us not to use sand? You're using sand, but you're telling us not to use sand. Why is that? I brought you around here into the test patch. Last autumn, we killed this section of grass off, this section of field off. Um, we redid it and we covered it with different things. We used some plaster and sand, we used some topsoil, and we used some compost. And the area that had sand, didn't grow at all. The reason for that, there's no goodness in sand at all. Sand is, if you think of sand, it's just stones. So there's, it doesn't hold any goodness at all. Whenever you top dress your lawn with sand, it's really good because it's easy to work into the surface and it does help you create a nice level surface. The downside to it is whenever you're real mowing or cutting with a cylinder mower, the mower doesn't like it because the next, the first couple of cuts after you, you top dress your lawn, it gets into the rails and it dulls the blade. So that's a real downside to top dressing your lawn with sand. If you're finding this video useful about top dressing your lawn, make sure to smash that like button for me. Must say we're really lucky we're um, here. We have some space in the outhouses to keep the sand. Come on in, we're going to have a look at it. Now, I'm going to say this sand's been in here for about the last six months. So the real benefit behind keeping your sand inside is obviously it's lovely and dry. Now, this is a sports sand, and I'm very fortunate that one of the golf clubs that I film at, they give me that you can't buy this sand, unfortunately, by the ton. You have to buy it by the lorry load. The reason being that it's so expensive to transport about the place. There's not that many quarries that meet the specifications. This is a USGA sand, so there's not that many quarries that meet the specification. But there's the joy between, behind having it inside. It's lovely and dry. And whenever we put that on, it just goes on really nice and it mats in really easily. So at the minute, the wheelbar is really hard to push. I think we must have a bit of a soft tire, so let's put some air into it. It's a handy tool that saved me on a few occasions. I get asked a lot of questions about why you shouldn't use sand and why sand isn't good for drainage. So I'm going to try and cover that now. So we'll take a profile out of the lawn. Now, a lot of people say to me, Robbie, if I add, if I add sand to my lawn, it's going to help with drainage. So let's have a look. So we'll take some of our sand, we'll put it on there. And we'll give it a shake. So that's our top dressing on top of the lawn. At most, there's a tiny, there's a small, small, thin layer there. I'm just curious how much drainage that's really going to add to your lawn. I would say very, very little. So we'll just put this back into the lawn. Another big downside to using sand is you don't know what's in it. The last time we top dressed this lawn with that sand, afterwards we got endless amount of weeds. You're going to get weed seeds blown into the material you don't know. If you're buying bagged screen topsoil or compost, it's usually heat treated to kill any weeds, but that's not the case with stuff like this. Now, 
Now, I know you're probably looking at this and saying, Robbie, there's not, you're not putting a lot of sand down there, but for us in, here in the UK, it's all about top dressing. It's just little and often. We don't want to bury it. it. I watch a lot of American channels and I see the amount those guys put on. It's absolutely crazy. But something you have to bear in mind is we have different growth rates and probably different grasses here. So as well, I'm filming this in, in April and the grass isn't in the full swing yet. If we put on loads and loads of sand, we would just end up smothering the lawn. It wouldn't do the lawn any good at all. So at the minute, it's just about little and often. If you're enjoying this video, smash the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. This is a drag mat. We use this for pulling the material into the lawn. Now this is a homemade version of something professional. We made this for under £40. I'll leave the link to where you can buy this mat down in the video description. It's all you need is a, a broom shaft, a, a bit of rope and some cable ties. Works really, really well. Now, I know from my previous viewers, if you're storing this all rolled up in the corner of your shed, you're storing it wrong, you want to lay it flat like this and put your lawnmower on top of it. There's another method or another tool you can use for leveling your lawn and it is pretty popular and that is the lawn loot. Now, I'm not really a big fan of them for a big garden like this, not very good. If I was doing small areas, these are really good, but for this here, but we'll take it out and have a go with it now. This area here around the daffodil bed, around the, the beech tree, the more goes round and round that, so it does sort of naturally dip there. So that area there, we're going to use the lawn loot and see if we can just get it nice and level. If you want to use sand on your lawn, always use a sports sand as it is round in nature and it doesn't compact. Other sand such as plastering sand and builder sand isn't suitable for lawn. If you want to find out why, make sure to watch the video next.